Greetings everyone. Let's see if this works. Uh, I don't have my headset today. Uh, today's topic uh, will be about a recent newcomer in uh, legal in, in the legal arsenal. And that is known as a slap suit. SLAP stands for Strategic Lawsuit Against Public Participation, S-L-A-P-P. -P. Uh, it is a very, it's a relatively new topic. You see, uh, before now it was really hard to prove someone said, he said, she said. Um, it's really hard to prove anyone said anything. Um, so you didn't really have a way to target someone who wanted to, uh, who was saying bad things about you. This, this is closely related to defamation. Um, very closely related. Defamation is one of the, is one of the, uh, classic, or as classic can be, uh, slap lawsuits. And they've always existed, um, but very rarely did you get you don't get uh, defamation suits on the scale you do today. And the reason for the changed scale is the internet. You see, now anyone with a stick of, anyone with a uh, axe to grind can just say what they want. And it is immortalized on the internet forever. And we find a lot of public figures uh, don't like it when people say bad things about them. We see this a lot with, uh, po with politicians, uh, corporations, um, all you, you name it. They're a public figure. They don't like people talking smack about them. So the question becomes, what? Uh, what do they do? Um, they tend to sue. Generally defamation, uh, but there are some other uh, legal concepts they'll use. And the core factor in all of these is the law, the lawsuit isn't what matters anymore. It is not uh, they don't care if they win the lawsuit. In fact, generally, they don't want to fight the lawsuit. What they want to do is get you to retract your statement. And they're going to get you to do this by putting the enormous financial burden of a lawsuit on your shoulders. If you're looking at me now and saying, well, that seems unfair, you're right. Uh, this, a, a, law, a strategic lawsuit against public participation is a lawsuit designed to censor speech. Uh, uh, generally, I don't know of any cases where the opposite would be true, but in general, so generally you can say that it's used to silence critical speech. Don't know why everyone would try to sue to, though you can get lawsuits from competitors trying uh, to sue uh, about claims supporting a product, I guess. So you might be able to get a slap suit trying to shut down uh, praise in that way. Uh, but the classic example that we're going to discuss is the idea of silencing critical speech. So the question becomes, what do you do um, in a lawsuit like this? Uh, when you are hit with a slap suit, uh, because you said something mean on the internet. Uh, the first thing to do is refer to my blog on defamation. Uh, primarily, is what you're saying opinion, or is it fact? 
Is it true or is it false? Um, you can handle a strategic lawsuit, a, a slap suit. Uh, you can handle a slap suit uh, just like you would any other defamation suit. But what if, uh, but remember, the point of this is to burden you with the costly defense of a lawsuit and uh, threaten you to stop. So how do you avoid the costly lawsuit? Well, one of the uh, primary things to do is try to find uh, pro bono assistance. Um, but if you can't, uh, check if your in fact, if, even if you can, see if your state has an anti-slap statute. Um, these exist in a lot of states. Um, some are better than others. At its core, what a slap sta anti-slap statute is, is a statute, well, let me get, let me go back to a, a case, a defamation case for a second. A normal defamation case will go like this. You will, uh, first have a, your first, you can have your first attempt, um, there's two places you can try to cut out or leave a lawsuit. The first is to basically say um, there is no case. Uh, the problem is, is that a all all your uh, all the person on the other side has to do is say, well, yeah, there really is. And in a def in a suit like a defamation suit, um, it's really hard to get it uh, cut off there. Um, the next is to say, well, it won't win on the merits. Uh, there that there's uh, that there's no evidence. Um, uh, of a case. Um, and uh, you can still, uh, despite, uh, despite what you might think, all they really have to do is kind of say, yeah, here's the evidence, and it, uh, well, then, uh, without judging the, the, the quality of the evidence or the volume of the evidence, just if there's any evidence at all, it's really hard to, uh, get it knocked out again. Um, so what an anti-slap statute does is add a third way. And what it does is it says... It's the first thing you do is file an anti-slap motion. And what it does is it turns around the burden of proof. Um, you are required to prove that the speech uh, being, uh, that is being attacked by the slap lawsuit is uh, protected speech. And what is protected speech? I do not mean First Amendment speech. Um, some statutes say only petitions, only communications to the government, uh, petition and petitions to the government are uh, protected. Some statutes say if it's protected by the First Amendment, it's protected by the SLAP statute. And there is a wide variety of combinations in between. Um, so all, what you have to do is establish that your speech is, is protected 
by the anti-slap statute. Once you prove this, uh, the burden of proof flips, and it is now on the plaintiff to uh, show what statements are defamatory, uh, which statements are the false statements, and provide enough evidence that if everything were accepted as true, uh, well, um, the defendant must, the plaintiff must show that he has enough evidence to win a case, uh, to, to show that the statements are in fact defamatory. The level of proof required also varies from state to state. Uh, the primary uh, example recently, I think it was Minnesota, um, had their anti-slap statute declared unconstitutional. Um, and there's a very specific reason. Um, rather, uh, the standard that most anti-slap statutes have is that the uh, plaintiff must show that given all of his evidence being true, so we're not judging the quality of the evidence, just that if the evidence was true, uh, would he win the case? Um, and, uh, that's a, uh, that's a good standard. Um, the, uh, the flip side is that Minnesota said, and if it's not Minnesota, I'm sure you guys will yell at me in the comments, um, Minnesota's Supreme Court said the law did not say that. The law established a stricter standard. Um, and that standard is that there must be a preponderance of evidence. Um, uh, I think it's the wording. But the, the basic concept is that uh, there had to be enough uh, what's the word? There had to be enough evidence of high enough quality that a winning the lawsuit was likely. And the Minnesota Supreme Court said what that is doing is making the trial judge who is, uh, admin who is uh, ruling on the slap statute to have to uh, rule on the basis has to rule on the quality of evidence. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, a judge's place um, is primarily to make decisions of law. Um, generally, a finding of fact is made by a jury. Uh, this is where the right to a jury trial comes in. Uh, so the, the theory is, is that by making the trial judge judge the quality of the evidence, you have denied the plaintiff the right to a jury trial. Um, and that's actually a reasonable, uh, decision, and, uh, while lamentable, it set a clear uh, bar that a slap statute could be written in Minnesota, as long as the bar, as long as uh, the statute is rewritten, lowering the bar to the uh, if all evidence is found to be true uh, uh, standard. Now. Uh, what good does the slap statute 
really do. Uh, people might ask, you know, it's all well and good. I'm spouting off all these legal concepts. But really, help me out here. Why, what good does it actually do? Very simple. Most uh, slap suits are punctuated by vague claims. Uh, Ken White of Pope Hat uh, likes to say, vagueness in a, le in a lawsuit filing is the sign of censorous thuggery. That is to say, if you're being vague in your defamation suit, you're probably being vague because there you know there's not any actionable statements. Um, again, refer to my defamation uh, video uh, for concepts of what is actually actionable as a defamation claim. It's not as much as you think. Uh, and so, you come to the the uh, what a slap suit does is makes the plaintiff early in the trial actually point out direct statements that he finds actionable. Uh, let me rephrase that. Direct statements they find actionable. I apologize for the gender bias there. I'm fighting it, but it exists. Uh, so, you, uh, this allows you to start gauging on the merits of the case. Uh, well, the merits of the case. Uh, you, you can actually start to judge what uh, is actionable, what is not. Do you want to fight for that statement? Do you not? Um, uh, a good example would be, you know, you made an offhand comment. It's not that important to you. Uh, you can get off with retracting it without making a direct apology. Sure. Uh, if that opinion is important to you, if that opinion is critical to the piece at hand, you know, then you start having, you have to pursue other options, uh, especially if there's, uh, even a hint that it might be considered a statement of fact. Um, but it allows you to have that information. It also, uh, forces him to display his evidence. Um, this also is a uh, key because when you're planning, even if you lose the slaps, the slap motion, uh, having knowledge of the evidence against you allows you to, uh, plan your defense more effectively. Uh, this is why we require, um, uh, that the attorney, uh, general, the attorney general's office produce, uh, the evidence to the defense lawyer. They cannot actually spring it on them in court. And despite what you've seen in Don TV, uh, evidence that is sprung on a defendant in court is generally frowned upon and is far more likely to get suppressed in a criminal trial. Uh, in a civil trial, you don't have that right, uh, but the slap suit gives you that right. Um, it allows you to see the evidence, see the actual claims he is going to make, and uh, either get this, the suit dismissed very early and relatively cheaply, or go into a trial knowing full well what the case is against you and whether or not you have a case uh, to defend yourself with. Uh, 
So in that way, a slap suit is very, very important. Uh, for years, uh, the legal blogs I follow have been calling for a federal anti-slap statute. Um, why? Because uh, while there are various state statutes, they're, uh, they're, as I mentioned, really random in what standards they apply. And uh, they, uh, what's the word? Oh, and, and it doesn't apply to federal claims. In fact, there's even disagreement whether you can use it uh, with this, you can use a slap defense, a state slap statute uh, against state claims made in federal court. So, a federal statute uh, primarily would protect federal claims. Uh, it would be something you can use in federal court. Uh, it recently was introduced, uh, a federal anti-slap statute, and it's got one provision that is uh, going to make it really hard to get past. Uh, and that is that it, the, the uh, federal anti-slap statute, greatly broadens the rules of federal... Uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's basically the, the concept that you can take a uh, state claim and remove it to federal court. Uh, um, primarily, this is done when there's an interstate claim. I live in California. A guy in New York is suing me. Uh, generally, that's going to get remanded to a federal court and be dealt with by federal judges... Um, rather than state ones, that generally puts you on a better footing. Um, and there are a variety of claims that, uh, can get remanded to federal jurisdiction. Uh, and what this would do, the, the federal anti-slap statute that's currently being presented in Congress, uh, would... Uh, say that any case covered by the slap statute uh, could be remanded to federal court. Uh, and this makes, uh, and basically, you'd have to go in federal court, go through the slap statute, the appeal to the slap stat, the appeal to the anti slap motion, uh, and then. And only then, if it fails, will it go back to a state court. Why is this a problem? Well, it's going to put a lot, lot heavier caseload on federal courts. Um, that's bad. Um, well, it might not necessarily be bad, but uh, the perception is that that's going to be a bad thing. They're not prepared for it. Um, it's going to cause massive case backlog is going to be the argument. And that's probably true. Uh, just because uh, that's uh, the state court is what it should be there for. Um, now, uh, so proponents of the federal anti-slap bill are concerned that the addition of this provision in the law, um, we don't like to expand federal jurisdiction. So the provision to expand federal jurisdiction is seen as a toxic provision in the law. And so many of us are very worried that we're not going to get the federal anti-slap statute we desperately need. Why desperately? <laughs> because a lot of corporations whose uh, whose uh, morals are somewhat questionable, Ro Roca Labs, for instance, uh, 
sue people all over the country. They're internet companies. <laughs> and uh, so a lot of those cases could quickly go, be pulled, uh, might uh, be attempted to be pulled into federal jurisdiction to avoid anti slap motions. Um, this is a very uh, bad idea. This is going to harm speech um, and it's going to harm uh, the basic core uh, reasons that these states instituted anti-slap statutes. Um, it's a very constitutional problem. In fact, uh, next blog I do I'm gonna do on a, I'm gonna do a general primer on free speech, what it is and what it isn't. Um, I'm gonna get into depth uh, about that. Ways to recognize censoring uh, the f people who are being censorous. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Again, uh, comment down below if you want to see any uh, legal concepts explained. Uh, I've already gotten a suggestion to cover renter's rights. Uh, it's a subject near and dear to my heart. And I will be doing that in a future video as well. Uh, so please have the information, bring it to me, and I will uh, do my best to research and give you a basic primer. Uh, bye.